Welcome back. We are going to introduce periodic table and we will discuss atomic number, symbols, atomic weight, element, and compound. Today, we have invited a guest speaker you already know. If not, you will know him today. Be attentive while listening to his speech as the voice is coming from very far and I have no idea how far he is talking from. I am Dimitri Mendeley. Dimitri Mendeleev, and I am the first person who designed the periodic table. What is the periodic table? Periodic table shows all known elements in the universe. Periodic table organizes the elements by its chemical properties. How do you read periodic table? You can see at this diagram there are two numbers, one on the top, one at the bottom with decimal, and one letter and the name of the element. What is the atomic number? The number of protons found in the nucleus of an atom. Or you can say the number of electrons surrounding the nucleus of an atom. What is a symbol? Symbol is an abbreviation of the element name. What is atomic weight? You see the number with decimal at the bottom of this picture. The number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom is known as the atomic weight. How do I find the number of protons, electrons and neutrons in an element using the periodic table? Number of protons in an atom tells us atomic number. Number of electrons are equal to the number of protons. Therefore, we can say number of electrons equal to atomic number. How you can determine the number of neutrons? Subtract atomic number from atomic weight. Now you can look at this script, symbol, name, atomic number, atomic mass. What is atomic mass? The average of the masses of all the elements isotope. Rounding the atomic mass to the nearest whole number yields the mass number of the most common isotope. I hope you already know isotopes. If not, ask your teacher to teach you and inform you about isotopes. What's mass number? The sum of the numbers of protons and neutrons in a specific isotope. This diagram shows number of protons, number of neutrons, and the electrons and also the nucleus of a carbon atom. Now you are almost as smart as I am, but not as handsome. Man, I look good. What's an element? 
What do you see in these two pictures? All circles are red on the right top picture. The bottom one you see two atoms connected together and all are same. So what's an element? A substance composed of a single kind of atom. Element cannot be broken down into another substance by chemical or physical means. What is a compound? A substance in which two or more different elements are chemically bonded together. Remember, chemically bonded together. This is a periodic table. The periodic table is the most useful tool to a chemist. Because, well, they think, why this is important? The periodic table is the most powerful, most useful tool to a chemist. You get to use it on every test. It organizes lots of information about all the known elements. Now I'm getting busy. Your teacher would give you more information. Okay, friends. Let's talk about peri periodic table chemistry. It was a mess without periodic table. Why? There was no organization of the elements. Imagine if you are going to a store and you don't know where the things have been placed. You don't know where you can find them. So it's hard. So it's very difficult to find information. And without periodic table, chemistry doesn't make any sense. Dimitri Mendeleev, you can call him, you, uh, he is the father of the table. How Mendeleev worked. He put all elements in rows by increasing atomic weight. Put elements in columns by the way they reacted. Some problems. There were some blank spaces because at that time elements were not discovered. He broke the pattern of increasing atomic weight to keep similar reacting elements together. The periodic table we are using nowadays, that was designed, the current periodic table, modern periodic table, designed by Henry Mosley. What's the difference between Dimitri Mendeleev and Henry Mosley's periodic table? Henry Mosley put all elements in rows by increasing atomic number. Horizontal rows are called periods. If you read from left to right, you will see that there are seven horizontal rows known as periods. If you read top to bottom, they are vertical columns, they are called groups, and there are 18 columns in the periodic table. Look at this picture. You see green arrows going downward. Count them, they are 18. They are red arrows moving towards right. They are called periods. You see at the bottom, there are two rows. One has been labeled as six period subset, second one seventh period subset. Elements in the same group have similar chemical and physical properties. Why they have? similar physical and chemical properties. 
because they have the same number of valence electrons and they will form the same kind of ions. You will know ions later. Families on the periodic table. Columns. Groups are also known as families. Families may be one column or several columns put together. Families have names rather than numbers, just like your family has a common last name. Columns, vertical up and down columns of the periodic table. There are 18 or groups or families. Elements in the same group or family have similar Features, similar physical and chemical properties. Roles. You see, left to right. And look at this row given on this slide. K, number is 19. And you see as you move towards right, you see atomic number increasing. Elements in a period are not alike in properties. The first element in a period is generally a solid. And the last element in the period is always an inactive gas. Atomic number increases from left to right. Atomic mass also increases from left to right across a period. When you study rows or periods, you see metals are on the left side of the periodic table. All non-metals are on the right side of the periodic table. Again, look at this, how it has been designed, how you can read. First element, group 1, period 1, you see hydrogen. Hydrogen belongs to a family of its own. Hydrogen is a diatomic reactive gas. When we say diatomic, it means it always participates in the form of two atoms, not single. Hydrogen was involved in the explosion of the Hindenburg. Hydrogen is promising as an alternative fuel source for automobiles. Group 1. Below hydrogen, you see starting from lithium until francium, FR. They are very reactive metals. Do not occur freely in nature. They are soft, so soft you can cut with an ordinary knife. They explode when comes in contact with water. They combine with halogens to form salts. Alkali metals means elements of group 1 have one valence electron. This is group 2. These elements or this family is called alkaline earth metals. Very reactive but less reactive than group 1 not found free in nature and very important part of minerals they have two valence electron now from group 3 through 12 they are called transition metals they are ductile ductile means you can make wires out of those metals Malleable. You can convert those metals into thin plates if you hammer them. In these metals, iron, cobalt and nickels can attract a magnet. So I can say iron, cobalt and nickels are the only elements known to produce a magnetic field. Transition metals group 3 through 12, less reactive. They are hard, they are used in jewelry and constructions. Rare earth metal, the bottom two rows of the periodic table. One row, the top one is called lanthanide. They are soft metals that are very rare. They found in combination with oxygen in the earth's crust. The bottom row, actinite, they are radioactive. Only three elements from actinides are natural. All others are lab-made or you can say man-made. 
and you can look at it few examples and remember one thing all metals are solid except mercury hg it is liquid at room temperature other metals in group 13 and 14 you can find these metals they are also ductile they are malleable they are solid they have high density and they are opaque metalloids these elements boron silicon germanium astatine antimony tellurium polonium these elements are metalloids metalloids are those they have properties of both metals and non metals and some of the metalloids such as silicon and germanium are semiconductors it means they can conduct electricity this property makes metalloid useful in computers and calculators non metals every element or all elements on the right side of metalloids are non metals non metal means they cannot conduct electricity or heat they are brittle if you hammer them they will be shattered they exist in two of the three states of matter at room temperature gases such as oxygen solids such as carbon they are not shiny they do not have luster they do not reflect light halogen group 17 most active non metals and you can see in this group iodine astatines are solid bromine is a liquid fluorine chlorine they are gases halogens have seven valence electron what are halogens group 17 very reactive volatile also diatomic means when they participate always participate with two atoms always found combined with other elements in nature they are used as disinfectants and they provide strength to your teeth noble gases you see in group 18 far right column of the periodic table they are inert inert i n e r t what does it mean inert means they do not react they do not participate in any chemical reaction this word i n e r t inert mean unreactive they do not form compounds their outermost electron shell is full helium has two valence electron all others have eight valence electrons they are used in lighted neon signs used in blinks